everyone, Tiffany Manger here, and this time I just have a card, no special technique or anything. Um, I'm going to call this, I guess, the Honeycomb Border card. As you can see, it's got a little popped up of the Honeycomb look here. And um, this might be a long video because we've got a lot of steps to do. So let's get started. First off, you're going to need your base, this... Um, this one I'm going I'm to do a long one, so I got 11 by 4 and a half, and I scored it at 5 and a half. 4 and a quarter, I am sorry, 4 and a quarter. I'm just going to fold that in half like so. Next off, you have a piece of soft suede, and I wanted a little bit, excuse me, I bumped my camera here. Let me... Um, I wanted more of a border around, so I made it a little smaller than our standard layer size. So this guy I have at three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. And this guy, we're just gonna take him here, and he's just a layer. So what we're gonna do is, is just kind of center him in there stick him in there like so that's all you got to do with him so next off we've got our next layer we have got here it's a piece of whisper white and I did this one four and seven eighths by three and five eighths so if you want to just make even quarter size quarter sizes as you can. So what we're going to do is, is I took my soft sky ink pad and I want to kind of get this streaky like look. So what I did is I'm just going to run him across like so. I just wanted to get this wispy, nice streaky look to it. So I did that for the sky. For the grass I did the wild wasabi and you probably will have to I re-inked these right before I did it if you want like a nice good streaky make sure it's freshly re-inked and like I said I'm just gonna go with this nice streaky look you can leave a little white in there if you would like I try to get it a little mostly covered and there we go and I mostly use just the edge but there we go. And we got that going on there. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in here. That was wild wasabi, by the way. Garden green. To give it more of a layer, I'm going to take um, my garden green sponge. Kind of give it like a little bit of a dimension, so I'm gonna go and sponge part of the bottom here in garden green. Kind of make it look like you're looking from some bushes. Give it some more layering look. I'm just gonna make it dark right there. All right, so I got that pretty little meadowy look. This reminds me of kind of something like Bob Ross would do. Where it kind of looks like paintbrush strokes, if you want to say it that way. Okay, let me, I'm going to put my garden in anyway. Okay, so next off, I'm going to take Rose Red. I picked this color because I don't use it very often. And I figured I'm going to use it for this. And... I'm using the Dragonfly Dreams. See these little dots here to make our flowers? We're going to stamp these in rose red. Do I have them lined up? Yep. And I'm going to kind of put them where some of them are popped up into the blue, but most of them are in the green. So like so. We're going to stamp that right there. There we go. And this will lighten up as it's drying. We're going to keep rose red out. And I brought in, I didn't want to use the sayings that were in Dragonfly Dreams. I like the thinking of you, so I brought out Sheltered Tree because I haven't used it in a while. 
and we're going to stamp thinking of you right along the top, like right there. There we go. All right, we're done with the rose red. So then I brought in one of my green markers. This guy here is olive green. And I'm going to use the writing tip to make my stems. I'm just going to go along the bottom and randomly make stems on the flowers here. Like so. A little sloppy, that's okay. But there, you just kind of look like, I don't know if you can see it, you got your stems going on there. So there is that piece. That piece is done. And you can attach it to your card. Like so. It's actually going quicker than what I expect. Alright, and then we're just going to layer that right onto the card like so. This is actually the quick part of it. Okay. So heck, if you want to leave it like that, you can. That's a nice, pretty looking card. So we're going to set this aside. Now what we're going to do is to get our honeycomb pieces. I have a piece of Daffodil Delight. Delight. That's the same as the base here. Three and a half by three and a half. You can make it any size you want. It doesn't matter. I've also brought out the hexagon dynamic textured impressions folder this is like an embossing folder it's a little thicker it gives more detail to it and the side where they're not puffed up they're puffed in we're going to take soft suede and we're just going to kind of lightly ink up our ink or uh, folder here okay like so and I can put that away so then when I go to run it through the folder I'm going to put this down here I'm trying to get the ones that aren't too inky around the edges which was up around here and then I'm going to close that up and I'm going to run it through my Big Shot. Now, when you're running these sticker folders, you're only going to use one plate. So you don't sandwich them in between your plates here. You're only going to use one that goes on top. All right. So now that we ran that through, there we go. And then you would just clean this up, spray some of your stamp cleaner on it and clean them up. I will do that then. So now we're going to cut out our hexagon shape. And you can do this any way you want here. So, so we're just going to cut this down to right around. We're just going to cut it any random way. Here. Just cut right up the lines. And then, like I said, this is probably the most time consuming part. Let's see here, how did I do this guy here? Up like that. I'm trying to copy here what I've got going on on my other one. And like I said, you're just going to go around with the lines. And then we'll bring this guy down and bring this guy over and bring this guy. I'm trying to get into the lines there. Oop. And then we'll bring this good. Oh, there we go. So there's our top. Let's do our bottom here. So let's cut 
take this guy off. Right there. And then, how oh, did I do this? He went up. He went down. You know what? I'm going to go by this guideline here. So, he went up, he went down. Ha. I did like multiples of these for a meeting the other night. So, so it was time consuming when you do a lot of them, but not just one isn't too bad. Like I said, this is our, this is the time consuming part. I should, I wanted to do this before the video, but then I thought, nah. I wanted to show the technique on how to stamp it and emboss it. So, all right, there we go. So, there would be our bottom, there would be our top piece. So, now what we're going to do is line them up there. Yeah, that will look good. And make sure it doesn't cover your piece. Okay. So we're good. So now we're going to take dimensionals. I'm going to use my little mini dimensionals here. Look at these guys. They're all mini. They're cute. So we're going to put one there. One there. One there. I'll grab a couple more. One there. And we'll put one there. And then let's get to here. We'll put one there. One in the corner there. Got a few more here. Put one there. Whoops, come on, buddy. There. <laughs> there. Okay, get on there, buddy. He does not want to go on. There. And let's do a few more. We'll do one like right around there. And yeah, that'll work. Okay. So now we're going to just take our little back pieces off here. Make sure they're sticking. All right, come on. Come on. All right. Now when you go to line this, line it along the border of the yellow. So we're getting like a 3D textured look here. Okay. So then I'm going to get these little backings off. And okay, stick there. A little dimensional wants to come off instead of there we go. And we're gonna line this along the be careful not to rip it. The bottom of the border here. Along with the side. So there you go. There's that. And now for the B, what I did was, is, uh, let me find my B. <laughs> there he is. What I did was to stamp him, he comes from Dragonfly Dreams, again. And I took this guy here in Daffodil Delight. I inked it up, I stamped it off, and then I stamped it down. And then I took this guy in the archival black and stamped him. And actually, I did the black before I did the yellow. I think it's easier to line it up that way. And then I went through with the Daffodil Delight marker and just colored the middle to make it look a little more bolder than the wings. So what we do here, there is a framelit for the bee, but it doesn't leave the detail in. It's just a nice, or the colors in. It's just a nice little detail and he'll be full of holes. You could put them over top of this lap if you want, but... I wanted this full colored effect B, so I'm just going to do what we call fussy cutting and cut him out like so. And for me, I find it easier if you move the paper instead of the scissors. And I'm going to cut his little antennas off because when you're fussy cutting, little tiny things like that are kind of a pain. And I figured he'll look cute without his antennas. So, there we go. And then I just took a glue dot to touch him on. And I 
kind of stuck him like right around there. I put the glue dot in the middle of his belly and I kind of fluffed his wings up for more 3D effect. But there you go. Excuse me. There we go. That is the finished product. And you can put anything you want in there. But that's how it is. It was pretty easy, wasn't it? So if you like what you've seen, please like my video and subscribe to my channels. I try to do a new video every week. If you would like to order any of the products you've seen here, please check out my website, www.tiffanymanger.stampinup.net. If you have any questions, you can either ask down below or you can check out my Facebook page, Tiffany Manger Stampin' Up! Demonstrator. I am also... In the process, I don't know if it'll be posted by then, of working on an actual Facebook group where I want to try to keep more in contact with people and maybe do some contests and whatnot. On that, um, I don't have the name. I'm still in the process for that. It might be posted up by the time I posted this video, but I will put it down below in the description when I get it up and running. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you come back again. Have a nice day.